Hello and welcome to the Teenology Podcast, where teens make sense of the world that they are about to change. Something funny already? <laughs> I'm your host, Aiden Middleton, and I'm excited to be here along with you guys and my Padre. Well, I'm excited to be here with my little Nino. Oh my gosh, that was so cringy. <laughs> well, Aiden, this is the second episode in our phone episode series. Oh, geez. Yeah. The Help I Use My Phone Too Much podcast. So I'm here with my son, Noodle Boy. What? Yes. First I was Nino. No, first I was Little Nino. Now I'm... So I, I get two names in one. No, you weren't Little, little Nino. No, you, I think I did say Little Nino. You did say Little Nino. Yeah. So, you're like, so I'm Little Nino and Noodle Boy. Yeah, you're Noodle Boy. So first boy. it was String Bean. So now I'm String Bean, Little Nino, and Noodle Boy. Pretty much. Wow. You got to get some. You got to get some protein shakes. So you can get some gains in those muscles. So stop looking like a wet noodle. Oh my gosh. <laughs> All right. Well, before we get into our phone content, you know what time it is, dude. It is time for the Gen Z word of the episode. Yes, sir. All right, Aiden, I got one for you, and I genuinely have no idea what this phrase means. Oh. It is high key. What in the world does high key mean? Okay, so do you remember when we did Loki? Yes, he's Thor's brother. <laughs> oh my gosh. No, no, no. Loki means not obvious. Okay. So, Thor's brother. It's not obvious that he's Thor's brother because, you know. <laughs> They kind of fight for different teams. <laughs> different teams? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Okay. So, high key is the opposite of low key. Okay. So, in this, in your sense, high key would be Thor. <laughs> and low key would be low key. This isn't helping. <laughs> Try again. No. So, high key means it's obvious if low key means it's not obvious. Okay. So, it means it's not so obvious. For so example, if I was like, I low key want Chick-fil-A, that would mean I kind of want Chick-fil-A. Okay. That makes sense. So if you said I high key want Chick Fil A, then you're saying I really, really want Chick Fil A. Yeah, and so people use it when they like are they really want something. Okay. Or so, something to happen. So you high key need to eat some protein shakes so you can grow out of your noodle arms. Oh wow! And you high key need to work out to get the fat off of you. Oh, <laughs> oh. Alrighty. Well, I think we have. I think the ship has sailed on this Gen Z word. Things are going downhill quickly <laughs> on the Teenology Podcast. Let's move on to our content today. All right, Dad. My first question. Yeah. What are some tips for phone etiquette? Etiquette. That's such an old person word. Well, well, like respect. You know, that's, that's how people say now, respect. How do I respect people? Okay. Right? All right. So here's here's kind of how a few thoughts on our second part of our phone series. It's just talking about like how do we actually use our phones politely in front of other people? Because we all have phones and they all buzz and they all alert us in the middle of conversations or while you're sitting down at dinner or something like that. So what does it look like? So mm -hmm. here's a few a few thoughts. The first thing that I want, want to challenge all you guys to do, and this is uh, honestly adults are just as guilty as us as kids, yep. but when you're with another human being, when you're in the presence of another person, face to face, face, to face you're talking with them, you're you know, hanging out, don't look at your phone. Just keep it in your pocket. Even if you feel that buzzing in your pocket, and we have this like compulsive need to pull it out yeah. and see what... So important, and then you thing pull it out, and it's something disappointing, like a spam call. Yeah, it's like nobody. I mean, how There's many no spam point. calls do we get every day? Right? We get yeah. like I probably get four or five spam calls a day, and it's not even anything. And so, what the first thing is is to say, man, when you're with somebody one on one, face to face, just keep the phone away. Give them your full attention because it's rude when you're on your phone in front of them. Yeah, it's super rude. I mean, with so if you're trying to talk to somebody, and then in the middle of that conversation. Uh, man, they start looking, looking at something else. Like they're totally tuned out. I actually did this the other day and I felt bad about it. 
Um, but I normally, this is kind of like a personal rule for me is I actually, I always make sure that if I'm talking to somebody, I'm going to give them my full, full attention. Yeah. That's a good one. Next, what are some good habits that we could pick up using our phone? Well, as I was thinking about this, one of the things that came to mind was just asking ourselves the question, if Jesus had a smartphone, how do I think, how do we think that he would use it? Now, Jesus obviously didn't have mm-hmm. a smartphone, so we're kind of superimposing our own culture on how he would have done something. And I was thinking about the yep. story in Mark chapter 5 when Jesus healed Jairus's daughter, and this guy Jairus comes, and his daughter's sick and dies And it says, while he, Jesus, was still speaking, there came from the ruler's house some who said, your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the ruler of the synagogue, do not fear, only believe. Now, I was thinking, what if Jesus had someone who had just experienced something horrific, his daughter dying, getting the news, Mm -hmm. and then Jesus was like, hold on, bro, I've got to... I got a text I need to check real quick. Like, how would that guy have felt? Yeah. Terrible, right? Like, he would have felt Jesus is not giving me his full attention. He's not engaged. He's not understanding my problems. Yeah. And so the first thing I think that if, if Jesus had a smartphone is I think that he would have showed respect for the people that came to him with their issues. And so he wouldn't have been disengaged from there. He wouldn't have said, hold on, man, or just look down at his phone, right? He would have been totally engaged in that person's challenge in that moment. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. The other thing is I think that Jesus would use it for good because what you got to remember is just like money, a phone is amoral, right? It's a tool. And so you want to use your tool for good. I want to use it for godly things and good things. So I shouldn't be using it for things to look at that I shouldn't be looking at. I shouldn't be texting things. I shouldn't be texting. I should show respect to other people. But and I, and here's the really the principle is that Jesus was present with us and he's always present with us. Mm-hmm. You know like if I'm struggling, if you're struggling, if I'm if I need prayer for something, but I can always talk to Jesus about what's going on. Yeah. He's present with us 100% of the time. And so in the same way the reason that we should be present with other people, meaning not distracted by our phones, mm-hmm. is that is because Jesus is that same way with yeah. us. He's present. Yeah. And it all comes down to like treating others how we would want to be treated. If we were talking to somebody, we wouldn't want them to be looking at their phone. Exactly. So, so what we got to remember is treat others just like you said, treat others how you want to be treated. The golden rule. It's mm-hmm. amazing how appropriate that <laughs> that rule is for us, no matter how old you get, how it's always appropriate. Yeah. And I'd even like to say, do something creative. Like if, if let's say a bunch of you, uh, a bunch of you and your friends are out and you're having dinner at a restaurant and everybody's got a smartphone. I heard somebody give this idea one time. They were like, listen, just take everybody, take their phones out of their pockets, turn them upside down and put them in the middle of the table. So you got five people out, you got five phones sitting in the middle of the table, and the first person to touch their phone has to pay for everybody's food. Oh. Makes it kind of fun. <laughs> so you're going to have this pile of phones sitting there buzzing away, and you can't look at it, or you got to pay for everybody's food. Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. So if you have a friend that lacks self-control and you need a free meal, you know, that's... that's oh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you're so mean. <laughs> All right, I got another question. What if, like, we've been doing bad things on it and being rude in front of other people with our phones? Like, how do we go through that? Yeah, well, the first thing just to remember is in Lamentations 3, 22 through 23, it says, The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. So the good news is that it always is a new day, and it doesn't have to be the first day of the week. It doesn't have to be the first day of the month to start over and to start fresh. And so ask Jesus for forgiveness. And like we talked on the last episode, set some boundaries And then remember that God's compassion is new for you every single morning. And so you can always come back to him over and over again for forgiveness and for grace to help you overcome. 
Yeah, because he always forgives you no matter what you've done. Hope you guys enjoyed that episode and took some things to heart and understood it and you'll apply it to your lives. You guys know how we do things. We keep it no cap on the Teenology Podcast. If you missed any other episodes, make sure you go back and check them out and tell your friends about our podcast and follow us on Instagram at Teenology Podcast and send in questions or topics that you want to hear about. Don't forget, the Teenology Podcast is where teens make sense of the world that they are about to change. See you guys in the next episode.